Um, here's a case um, that presented for treatment, and typically dentists and orthodontists uh, will go and go ahead and look at the dental aspects. But what we like to do is actually look at the patient's uh, overall kind of appearance to get an idea of what's going on. What we see here is that uh, if we look very carefully, we can see that this patient's head is slightly rotated in a counterclockwise manner. And then using the grid behind the patient, we can see that the, the shoulders are not quite level. And when we put those two things into combination, we start to think about what the cervical spine is doing. And we start to suspect cervical subluxation and therefore are going to seek a chiropractor or an atlas orthogonist to say, how can we best manage this patient? Looking at the same patient from the front, what we see is that the uh, shoulders are rolled forwards, probably got a, a, a forward head posture. We can see the hands are not at the sides, they're in front of the body, and some weight seems to be more on the left leg than on the, the right leg. Looking from the side view, we see the forward head posture again. Again, the hands are at the front of the body. There may be some overflexion of the lumbar spine, and we're just wondering what those knees are doing to maintain that position. But the, the most important thing here is the FHP, which is the forward head posture. So if you can't breathe, you tend to straighten your neck. You use the sternocleidomastoid muscle to bring the head forwards. Use the uh, trapezius muscles to lift the head and also the shoulders. And so there's going to be concurrent effects on the rest of the body. Now, dentists and orthodontists are not uh, experts in posture, which is why we need to work with um, physical therapists, chiropractors, and adults, the whole big group of people. But uh, what we do like to look at is facial appearance and specifically facial symmetry. And if you look at these photographs, um, the face looks quite symmetrical until you start looking at it in more detail. And then you'll find mild facial asymmetry in the eyes. So we draw a line straight across, and we'll see that the position of this lateral canthus of the eye right here, the corner of the eye, is above this line. And on the opposite side of the face, the lateral canthus is a little bit lower down. So the eyes are not as symmetrical as you might think. Looking at the ears, we see that this ear is a little bit further down compared to the ear on the opposite side, confirming that clockwise, counterclockwise head rotation that we saw earlier on. And we also see asymmetry of the upper lip. Now, looking at the face from the side view, this face would be described as having a concave facial profile. The facial profile could be convex, it could be straight, it could be prognathic, but in this case, it's concave. And the reason behind that concavity is, in this case, the chances are that the anterior part of the cranial base, this region of the cranial base here, is likely short. And therefore, the mid-face here needs to be further developed to produce a more pleasing and functional facial profile. But if you look at the rest of the body, we'll see that this uh, compensation goes all the way down, right down to the uh, legs of the, uh, of the patient. Um, we know that the head is held of the right foot. In this case, the left foot is slightly flared. And we compare this with the frontal photograph that we saw earlier. It's the opposite of what we saw in the previous photograph. We can confirm these findings radiographically. We'll find that the top jaw is smaller than the upper jaw. The tongue has a reduced space and they're going to have a constricted airway here. The facial profile is concave, as we said before. The lower border of the mandible has a double image confirming the asymmetry that we mentioned. And then if we start looking at the cervical spine, the distance between the occipital bone and the atlas, the posterior arch of the atlas, has been decreased. And the distance between the posterior arches of, of the atlas and the axis has also been decreased. And so from a chiropractic um, point of view, those would be areas that uh, our fellow professionals could start looking at. Radio the, radio the radiographic findings here show that we have this counterclockwise rotation of the head. Looking at the parietal and temporal bones, we find the asymmetry going on. If we do a center line to the middle of the face, we see the vertical uh, line is here. And uh, it's, uh, the face seems to be broader on the right side compared to the left, which is reflecting the asymmetry that we mentioned. And we can also see this asymmetry of the mandible. So what we suspect here is that the craniofacial architecture is not ideal. 
We already mentioned that the anterior cranial base is probably short. We can measure some angles from the cranial base down to the teeth, and we find out the top teeth are at an angle of 82 degrees, which is about normal. But then looking at the angle for the lower jaw, this blue angle here, the lower angle, sorry, the blue line angle here, uh, what we find is that it has been increased. And this uh, increase means that the cranial base angle is acute. So the lower jaw appears to be larger than the upper jaw. That is probably a optical illusion to some extent. It may be the position of the jaw as opposed to its size. So what has the body done? Well, it's flared out the upper teeth, um, so they are kind of inclined further forwards, and this indicates some degree of advanced compensation. And if we want to correct this uh, craniofacial architecture, one of the things we could do is redevelop the maxilla, or more ideally, as it should work with the cranial base, redevelop the anterior cranial base non-surgically, and to give a better and more balanced facial profile. Why does this all happen? Well, as we mentioned, we have a degree of developmental compensation, starting from the top of the head and descending from the cranial vault, the cranial base, the mid-face, the mandible. All of those features, including the teeth, will show some degree of developmental compensation. Whilst that's going on, the rest of the body is undergoing postural compensation, essentially from the feet up. So we have this ascending postural compensation, we have this descending developmental compensation. The question is, where do those two meet? And the answer is, most likely at the occipital atlas junction. And so here's the, the kind of handoff between the orthodontic uh, dental aspect and the chiropractic uh, aspect at C1. So we'd like to, you know, we can't actually finish on the mandible. We have to go further onto the upper cervical region and get the cervical spine uh, corrected to get the overall maximum medical benefit. Here's the same case. Here's a developmental compensation that we mentioned. This is called a class three malocclusion. The lower front teeth are in front of the top front teeth. Uh, we suspect that the upper jaw is small. The lower jaw is probably normal side, but appears to be large. And so what we'd like to do is work on both the dental aspects, but we can't finish on the mandible we have to also address the postural compensation, the postcranial structures, starting at C1 and going all the way down to the feet. Well, if we were to do that, if we were to address the craniofacial developmental compensation, we could do that using a DNA appliance. The question is, will there be any changes in postural compensation? So let's look at a couple of cases here. And here's a child, this is a young child, maybe five or six years old. And what we see here is a posterior crossbite the top teeth are inside the lower teeth, which is the opposite of what we would like. This patient was, uh, was uh, treated with a DNA appliance, and you can see that the crossbite has been corrected. The permanent teeth are coming through online. But let's look at her posture. Here's her posture before treatment. We see the asymmetry of the shoulder on this side, and here's the same child after the malocclusion had been corrected, what we see here is a nice leveling of posture, a nice leveling of the shoulders. And this child was not given any instructions on how to hold her body when those photographs were taken. Here's another case, an adult case. Uh, you can see here we see classical fold head posture, this kind of slouching kind of shoulder position. And she's wearing a DNA appliance. And we can start to see that her eyes here before treatment, they're asymmetrical. And as the treatment progresses, the eye symmetry has been improved, her smile aesthetics have improved, her overall health has increased. Look at the change in the posture of this patient. And so what we're saying is that this developmental compensation from the head down has to be corrected also from the feet up, and an increased level of homeostasis has to be achieved.